Hi again! It's uh, Saturday, May 9th, uh, the day after I picked up all of our baby native trees from the DEC uh, office in New Paltz. And even though it was uh, snowing overnight and below freezing this morning, uh, I know that these trees need to get right in the ground. I told you they're bare root, so the longer they're out of the soil, the less chance they have a success. So my family came over here this morning. We've been here for a few hours and we just finished digging 32 holes into which we planted 65 trees. So for those of you who like the fancy math challenges, you can figure out the average number of trees per hole. Uh, some holes got one tree, especially for the white pines because they had really big roots and root balls. Uh, a couple of the holes we put more than one tree. And part of the reason for that is um, to save time and part of the reason is that not every single one of these babies will survive. So when we plant them together in a little stand, uh, we give them a greater chance of survival as a group. So uh, today we planted all the cedars and all the white pines and all the winter berries. And we did that in a couple of places right here along the fence as you come into the front of the school. You can see here a nice little, what's gonna become a nice little stand of white pines and cedars all clustered together, evergreens. And we did the same on the other side, right on the other side of the fence there. Uh, another little stand of evergreens and white pines and then over along the front garden along route 9 where we uh, 9d where we grow our potatoes and corn we're kind of hugging that garden with um, uh, which ones the winter berries the winter berries which are gonna I think we planted them in a way where they won't block sun to the vegetables but they'll enhance the border and these are all gonna make kind of like natural borders in places where we might otherwise want a fence um, or a way to keep kids safe from traffic. Uh, now we're going to have nature doing that for us with native trees that are also attracting animals and making this whole ecosystem a healthier place. So uh, we just got all these trees in the ground. The last thing to do for today is a really thorough watering. Make sure that that soil gets really compacted down with lots of water. And just as we were finishing up, Emmett almost stepped on one. And he said to me, boy, we ought to make some signs so that people know where these new trees are. And I said, Emmett, you know, you think you're onto something. So that's exactly what you all are going to get to help me do as part of the way that you can begin your relationship with these trees. And coming soon, you're going to hear some more information about how to make signs that are going to go around all these areas where I planted. By the way, we're going to plant all the dogwoods and witch hazels tomorrow on the upper playground near where we planted the baby maples. But anyway, start thinking about signs um, that might go around these trees. Uh, we don't just want a sign that says keep out or no trespassing or watch out for trees. We want a sign that's beautiful and informative and interesting. Um, the kind of sign that you might see at a, uh, a nature museum or a state park or maybe a school where kids really value nature and how to protect it. So stay tuned for more on that. 